In the previous lecture, we began our discussion on LR circuits, so circuits that contain inductors and resistors. So we were able to derive the following equation that essentially describes the rate of change of our electric current when we insert a battery into our LR circuit. So when we connect a battery into the LR circuit, the current begins to increase according to the following equation. So we have our current I at any given moment in time is equal to V naught divided by R multiplied by 1 minus E to the power of negative T divided by tau. Where T is our time, V naught is the voltage of the battery, R is the total resistance, and tau is simply the time constant. It's the ratio L divided by R, where L is our inductance of our inductor. Now, let's examine the opposite. Let's suppose we want to examine the rate of change of our electric current when we remove our battery from our electric circuit. So what begins to happen to our electric current? So now let us examine the rate of change of electric current when we disconnect the battery from our LR circuit. So this, the moment we disconnect our battery, electric current begins to flow. It begins to decrease and we want to describe this decrease mathematically. So let's suppose we have the following diagram in which we essentially take our battery and we remove it from our circuit. So let's apply Kirchhoff's second rule. So Kirchhoff's second rule basically tells us that the sum of the voltage differences across a closed loop inside a circuit is always equal to zero. So let's begin at position three. So when we move from position three to position two, there is an increase in our a voltage and that increase is given by the induced EMF inside our inductor. Now when we go from position 2 to position 1 there is an increase in voltage given by I times R where R is our resistance. Now we know from our discussion on inductors that our induced EMF is equal to the product of L the inductance and the rate of change of our current di dt. So this becomes this and by Kirchhoff's second rule this sum is equal to zero because when we go from one to three nothing happens to our voltage. So these are our two increases in voltage when we go from position three back to position three. So let's rewrite this equation on top. So if we take this equation and rearrange it and bring all the i's to the left side and everything else to the right side, we get the following result. So di divided by i is equal to negative r multiplied by dt divided by l. So now we want to integrate. So now we integrate from a time of zero seconds, our initial time when our electric current is given by I naught to a time t when the electric current has decreased to a value of I. So we integrate both sides. So the integral of the left side becomes as follows and we're integrating from I naught to I and the integral of the right side becomes as follows. We're integrating from zero, time of zero, to a time of t. So if we integrate the left side, we get natural log of I from I naught to I. The right side becomes negative R divided by L. DT simply becomes T and we're integrating from zero to T. Now let's actually evaluate our integral. So the left side becomes natural log of I minus natural log of I naught and the right side becomes negative R divided by L times T. So we can use the laws of logs to combine this we get the following result natural log of I divided by I naught is equal to negative R times T divided by L. 
So now let's take the exponential of both sides and we get this result. Notice the natural log disappears and finally we can bring the i naught term to the right side and we get the following equation. So our electric current at any given moment in time given by t is equal to our initial electric current given by i naught, the maximum electric current multiplied by e to the power of negative t divided by tau, where tau once again is the ratio L divided by R. It's known as the time constant. Now, in this equation, our tau, the time constant, represents how long it takes our electric current to increase to 63% of its maximum amount. Now, in this case, the time constant represents the amount of time it takes our electric current to decrease uh, by 63% of its initial amount given by I0. So if we take this equation and plot it on the xy axis, where the x axis is the time in seconds, and the y axis is our electric current, we get the following exponential decay. So we see that the electric current inside an LR circuit decays exponentially over time. It decreases exponentially. So when we take our battery and remove the battery, our electric current will begin to decrease and it will decrease according to the following exponential equation.